This is an elephant playground in Pasir Ris Park that I used to love as a kid. Now, compare it to these playgrounds around my estate that were built in the last 20 years. Go ahead, take a closer look at these pictures. Do you realise that something is missing? It's this, the swings. The other day, I came across a photo of me playing on the swing at the playground when I was younger. I suddenly wanted to be on the swing again. And that was when I realised... It seems like swings have just mysteriously vanished from our playgrounds. So, what happened? Where did all of them go? To better understand the reason behind their disappearance, here's a quick history of playgrounds in Singapore. It all started in the 1960s, when HDB started building public housing flats. Back then, public facilities like playgrounds were very common, and swings were also very popular among children. Sandpits only became more common in the 70s. Playgrounds back then were mainly made of concrete. In the 80s and 90s, themed playgrounds became more common, and designs were inspired by the neighbourhood's heritage and culture. But in February 1993, a five-year-old boy's tongue was cut off when it was caught in the gap of a faulty slide in Amokyo. This accident happened only two months after the Straits Times highlighted the poor conditions and lack of safety standards in Singapore's playgrounds, including shaky seesaws, missing leather rungs, and loose hand grips. The playground at Amokyo was demolished, and inspectors were flown into Singapore to audit the safety of all our playgrounds. Most of them were deemed unsafe and had to be upgraded. And so, in 1999, SS457 was born. SS457 is a set of regulations that provides specifications for playground equipment that's for public use. And with this strict set of regulations, swings became much harder to build in playgrounds. According to SS457, when there are two swings, the distance between the swing's supporting structure and seat should be a minimum of 30 inches with the seat suspended 60 inches above the floor. If there's only one swing, there should be a minimum clearance of 30 inches between the seat and support structure when it's measured 24 inches above the floor. To ensure no children get hit by swings, the safety zone around swings must be at least two times of the swing's height. So for example, with swings being about 2 meters high, there has to be a safety zone of at least 4 meters to its front and back. There are 29 sub-subsections in SS457 dedicated to regulations for swings alone. So how have these specifications affected swings in our playgrounds? We spoke to an expert to find out. Hi, I'm Kao Wai. I'm a director in CMAC. So what my company does is we supply outdoor fitness and play equipment across the island. Based on the guideline, we require a lot of safety buffer or safety distancing. If let's say we have the same area, instead of putting a swing, I can put a play tower with play panel and with slides. So that we have more play values compared to a swing. So for swing, Nowadays, we only, you tend to only find them around in big parks. With so many specifications in place, along with space constraints in our neighbourhood, it's no wonder some contractors chose to get rid of swings in their designs. Besides swings, sandpits and concrete equipment have also mysteriously disappeared from our playgrounds. There are lesser sandpits right now is because sandpit requires maintenance. Like the sandpit that you see down here, perhaps you require top out once every few months or we might need to replace a portion of the sand if they are found to be unhygienic or contaminated. I mean, think about it. A sand pit is also kind of like a big litter box for roaming pets and your friendly neighbourhood cats. Now, imagine rolling around in all of that. That's why almost all sand flooring has been changed to EPDM, a type of synthetic rubber. It's resistant to UV rays and rough weather conditions, and it provides a soft cushion for children if they fall, making their playground experience a safer one. As for concrete, it erodes over time, which can produce sharp edges and increase the risk of injuries. Most concrete playground equipment has also been changed to plastic or stainless steel. But fun themed playgrounds are making a comeback. Over the years, the play industry as a whole has matured. So we are now able to develop, design, and fabricate customized play structure and able to comply to the safety code at the same time. What we hope to achieve for a thematic playground is let's say kids come to a park with a nice thematic play structure. They can let their imagination run wild. They may, oh wow, I'm in a, a, a forest. Uh, so this is what we hope to achieve. 
they, they can still have the same amount of fun compared to a standard pay structure. Those swings are not as common as they were in the past. They have been replaced by lots of exciting equipment as well, like cargo nets, zipline circuits, and even a water playground in the middle of a HDB estate. Wouldn't your 10-year-old self be so excited if your parents were to bring you here for a day out? It doesn't matter how old you are, playgrounds are made for the young at heart. So if you ever come across a swing in a playground you walk past, don't be afraid to swing to your heart's content. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to see more, don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the notification bell.